3.5, we're talking about trinomials. Now, trinomial is just any polynomial with three terms, but this specific trinomial is very common in math, and we are going to focus a lot on this kind of uh, trinomial. So we're going to call it trinomials. We're going to be factoring trinomials, and this is the typical form. It's called quadratic form, but you don't need to know that for a while. Um, but we're going to use this form. Now, your question to me is, um, what is this B all about? I know about X, and I know, you know, this. I don't know about B, or I don't know about C, okay? Well, don't be alarmed, because I could have written A right here, and I don't know if that would have helped you or not. But anyways, basically what this is, is B and C are constants, they're regular numbers. So, polynomials in this form would be, examples would be, X squared, because see, I didn't involve the X there because this is only going to be 1 for now. We're going to start off with this only being 1. So x squared, let's say, plus 2x plus 7. That's an example where b is 2 and where c is 7. Do you see that? So it's this format that we're going to explore. Another one, real quick, x squared minus 5x plus 1, where b is negative 5 and c is positive 1. So those are some examples. Now, I want to take you back to expanding. Last section, we talked about factoring and then checking by expanding. So I want to talk to you a little bit about how expanding works. If I have 5a and I multiply that by b plus 2, okay? what we need to remember, I'll make that a better 5, what we need to remember is that when we multiply a single term by a binomial, what we have to do is we have to expand or distribute. So we have to multiply the, this term by the first term first to get, and I'll actually I'll work underneath, 5ab. Make sense? Remember that? Then I need to multiply the, this term by the second term as well. So each term in the polynomial here, in this case a binomial, each term has to be multiplied by the factor in front. So then this is a 5a times a positive 2. That's going to be plus 10. And then a. Okay? So that's the expansion of a monomial. This is a monomial because it's a single term. And by a binomial. And that's a term, or that's a, a polynomial with two terms. Remember, mono is 1, by 2, tri is 3. Now, you may have seen this in grade 9. Hopefully you did, but I can't guarantee that all of you remember this. What happens if we have a plus b times, um, I don't know, b plus 1? This is a binomial times a binomial. Now, is there a certain word that comes to your mind when you see the multiplication of two binomials? Have you ever been taught this special word that helps you remember how to do this? No? It starts with an F? Four-letter F word? <laughs> no. Probably not the one you're thinking of. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a math one. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll explain that later. Okay. There is a, yes, yeah, a four-letter F word that we will use in math and uh, it will be totally appropriate, I promise, that will help you remember how to do this. But let me show you where this four-letter F word comes from, okay? Because everyone loves to use this four-letter F word in math. Okay, binomial, binomial. Yeah, now I got your attention, didn't I? Okay. So, this is how expansion works. This is critical. Everyone listen. This is how expansion works when you're talking about a binomial times a binomial. Or any polynomial times any other polynomial. Watch this. You take the first term always, and you multiply it by the first term in the other polynomial, okay? So in this case, we would get our first, we would write down A, B, okay, A, B. Then, because of the rules of distribution, each one of these terms has to be multiplied by each one of these terms. So now we go A times 1. This is looking familiar so far, right? And what's that? Well, this is going to be a positive, and of course this A is a positive, so that's positive. A. 
And yes, it turns into a plus. We are forming two different terms when we do these two multiplications. Now, the second thing we do is we go to the second term and we do the exact same thing. We distribute to each term. So B times B. So B times B gives us what? Plus, because it's a positive and a positive, plus B squared. And then, of course, this term hasn't been multiplied by the second term over here, so we got to distribute over here as well. And that is plus B. Okay. So, that's, that's how we multiply by distribution. Okay. Binomial times a binomial. Now, do we have any like terms here that I can squish together? Or that I can combine into one? Any like terms? Remember we talked about like terms? Any like terms? You know what? I don't see any like terms here. A, B, A, B squared, and B. Those are all different. So guess what? This is your answer for this expansion. Now don't worry about the order that you're putting them in. But you can't combine any, so you have four terms here. <coughs> Alright? Let's do another example. Now we won't get to the four letter F word yet. But I'll show you show you where it comes from in a second. I know you're all very anxious to hear which four letter F word I'm going to be talking to you about. But let's say we do X plus 1 times X plus 3. This is going to go a bit quicker now, this example, so watch. We distribute the first term to the first term over here, and I get x squared. Then I distribute x to the 3, and I get plus, make sure you put your signs in between, okay? Because it's either plus or negative, plus or minus. Plus, what's x times 3? How do I write that? 3x, write the number first. Don't write x3. Do not do that, okay? It's like... If your name is Abby, not saying anyone in here's name is Abby, but if you wrote it Y B B A and you say yeah, that's my name, Eba, that's not the same as Abby. Okay, so you so three X and X three are not the same. This is your name, not this one. So write three X, not X three, please. Okay, yeah, you can call Abby Eba now if you want, but she may not like it. Don't you dare. Okay, no, we won't. Okay, 1 times x. What's 1 times x? x. So I'm just going to put an x there, right? Did, did something wrong? What's wrong? Oh, the plus sign, right. Jeez, I just told you about that, didn't I? Well, it's almost like I did that on purpose. Good. Okay, someone's paying attention. Thank you. Plus x, right, from there. Now, finally, 1 times 3 is plus 3. 1 times 3, 3. Okay. Now, am I done? Or can I simplify this anymore? I'm, okay, I'm hearing some snake hisses. Okay. So, how can I do this? How can I gather like terms? Yeah, if you fall asleep in my class, I will wake you up. How can I gather like terms here? Any like terms I can gather? Is x squared and 3x like terms? No. Which ones are like terms? 3x and x. So how can I combine those? Well, x squared stays the same. What do I have when I combine these like terms now? Plus 4x. Very good. Plus 3. And then we are done. Notice, notice please, this is a trinomial in the form of x squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so we are going to explore trinomials that have factors that are two binomials. Okay, two binomials. Now, what's the four-letter F word that you've all been dying for me to say in class? Not food, no. Thank you for guessing food out loud. <laughs> yes, there are a few other words that you could guess out loud that I would not be so appreciative of. But yeah, food, no, it's not food. Okay, let me remind you of the process here. Um, I multiply the first terms. Then I multiply the outside terms. Then I multiply the inside terms. Then I multiply the last terms. <gasps> very good. Very quick. Okay, so 
the four letter F word is foil. Is that lame? Oh, it's not as it's not as exciting and as offensive as you were hoping. I'm sorry. Really sorry. Now what does foil stand for? Well, as I mentioned, when multiplying binomials, we multiply the first terms together. A plus B. A plus B. Okay. So let's just write out two binomials. First terms, right here. A times A. Next, you multiply the outside terms. And that is A times the B out here. See? Outside. This is outside and outside. Outside. Then the inside terms. And of course, that's going to be the inside term here and the inside term here. Multiply those together. Looks like a smiley face, actually, right now. Some weird... Okay, anyways, and then last terms. So we go right here, B times B. This is the last term, this is the last term. Okay, so here we go. Got the little foil person here. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, are you enjoying this? Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying this. Okay, so this is a uh, this is a very um, yeah sort of shifted face, but anyways, kind of looks like a this is the foil person. Okay, the highly controversial, offensive four letter F word person. Okay, got it. Okay, <laughs> good. See, math is fun, sometimes unexpected. Okay, so. Armed with all of this earth-shattering knowledge, what I need you to do now is I need you to do a couple examples here where you expand using the, it's called the FOIL method, although I don't think you'll see it in your textbook, but it's sort of like one of those shortcuts, okay? All right, ready? Um, <clears throat> let's do something simple. A plus B times A plus 8. I want you to multiply that out, gather any like terms, and, uh, and, and write the answer. So that's number one. Here's number two. So here are your three examples. Please go ahead and do those on your own in the next few minutes. I will do them myself here, and I'll show you the final product afterwards. You can compare your answers with mine. All right, so let's just go over. I'll show you what I did here, and you can tell me if you did the same or something different, if I'm wrong, if I'm out to lunch, if I didn't do, you know, the F word correctly. It's a bit awkward. Anyways, um, a times a is a squared. Okay, did you get that? A times 8 is 8a. Eight Please don't put a8, right? It's 8a. Eight Thank you. b times a, again, please put a b. Alphabetical. That's the proper way of doing it. Here's the thing. If you write a b one time, and then in the same question write b a, you will eventually make a mistake, and think that they're on like terms. Okay, so I'm just saying, write them in alphabetical when you can, you won't get messed up. And then B times 8 is 8B. Now, do I have any like terms? Is there another step I need to perform here? Like terms? No like terms. This is my final answer right here. Did you get that? Put up your hand if you got that same. Okay, very good. Hands all over the auditory. Good. Okay, X times X, X squared x times negative 3, negative 3x. 1 times x is x, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Like terms, yes, we should have some like terms right here, so we can combine those or collapse those into one term, right? Negative 3 plus 1, remember negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, we're not multiplying these, we're adding the coefficients, adding the numbers in front. So our final answer here should be Right here, x squared minus 2x minus 3. Get that? Okay. Is this one correct? Who, who's who got this answer before I, I go through it? Did I get this answer or get something different? Who got something different? Okay. And who got this answer? Okay. Let's, let's walk through it. First, 2x times x is 2x squared. Is that correct? Okay. You got to remember that that is 2x squared. We're not adding. It's not 3x multiplying. 
2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. 1 times x is positive x. And 1 times negative 5 minus 5. Good so far? Like terms, again, in the middle. And when you have like terms, lots of times they might be in the middle if they're in the same form, the binomials. Gather those, negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. Everything else stays the same. Yeah, this is the right answer. Okay? So if I could just talk to you about 12E really quick here, if I could just get you to stop and get your attention here. This is something very important. It's the last thing I'll talk to you about for this lesson, okay? But there, you will have binomials where you might have the numbers written first as the first terms. No problem. You do the FOIL method. You do your distribution. And you may get something that looks like this with a number in front and then this the variable at the end. See how we've had the variable squared at the beginning all the time? This is okay. Okay? That's okay. Or, this is or, or what's typical in trinomials is you write the um, highest degree of the variable, so the largest exponent of the variable, you write that term first, and then you work your way down. So this is the typical sort of the, the order of terms that eventually I will be requiring of you. But for now, for this assignment, you can just write it like this one or like this one. Okay?